I see. Yep. Again, it, symmetry. It's very similar to to what I teach people as well. Is you've got to be yourself. You you have to give yourself permission to be powerful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I find all too often people hide their true selves, and it's just so heartbreaking to see so many people that again try to fit into the box because that's what. 99% of people do. Whereas when we think back over history of the people that who have done something different, they actually stand out. And welcome back to the Be Successful podcast. I'm your host, Brian Elam, where I help entrepreneurs with a heart of service lead their business so they can change the world. And today, I am very excited to have Beck on my show today. Now, Beck McCarthy and I met as part of a thought leadership summit that we both attended. And we connected and realized we share a lot of things in common. This gal and I, our views just line up. It's it's crazy. So I am super excited to have her here, have her tell her story, who she serves, and just give you maximum amount of value to help level you up, not only as an entrepreneur, but as a human being as well. So Beck, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Brian, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. Well, I'm very happy to have you. And so let's just get right into it. You help entrepreneurs as well. You help Mm -hmm. them step into what you call the CEO mindset or that CEO place of operation. They've been in business for a few years, 10 years, whatever it is, but there's just that one little level they haven't been able to get to. And that's that CEO mindset you help them with. So Mm -hmm. the first question that I usually always ask is, how did you get started in this? Nobody's Nobody just comes out into the world as a child thinking, I'm going to be a coach to entrepreneurs. So how did this happen for you? Yeah, no, um, definitely. It's definitely been a journey to get to where I am. Um, I have been in business for 11 and a half years now. So uh, I have seen a lot and done a lot over that time. Prior to going into my own business, I was actually a teacher. So have always loved serving, helping, watching people grow. Um, I was actually quite frustrated with the education system and felt like I could do more. So from that, I actually started my own tutoring business. That became incredibly successful very quickly because I think differently. I think outside the box and I was really honing in on the student. And when we found out we're pregnant with my daughter, um, I kind of, you know, the, the mother maternal instinct kicks in and... I really wanted to be present and just spend some time with my my baby. So decided to sell my tutoring business and just spend some time being a mum. But being who I am, there's always thoughts and things ticking away. And I thought I can make such a bigger impact in this world. And I just love helping people and I love seeing people thrive. And I know that some people just, you know, they'll roll their eyes when they say when people say that, but like I genuinely love watching other people succeed and helping them to achieve their dreams. It lights me up to see them doing well and thriving because I honestly believe that the more that we do and the more that we can generate, like the impact that we have can bring in more money and it's okay to make good money because then we can do more. We can help more people in this world. So, um, I love being successful. I love thriving for that next stage. And through that journey of selling the tutoring business, I then actually fell into network marketing and wasn't very happy with the way that you have to gen, you know, genuinely climb the ladder that they want you to do it that way. So um, I decided to shake things up and really hone in on my leadership skills and I grew my teams very, very quickly. So through that, I was then noticed from other businesses and um, was asked to do speaking and sort of teach how I do business and how I 
can stand up as that leader and be able to draw people in and be able to support them to reach their goals. And so from there, I became an international speaker. Um, prior to the pandemic, I was actually traveling the world, just speaking, sharing my voice and supporting my teams that are all over the world with my network marketing business. And then the pandemic hit and I couldn't, we couldn't go anywhere. I'm over here in Australia and we couldn't even leave our suburb. I mean, I'm not sure what it was like over there in the US, but we couldn't even leave, leave our, little, our little box of our suburb. So my entire calendar for 2020 was wiped in an instant because all of these travel plans were, were gone. So in that moment, I really remember reflecting back, I remember I had two choices of, I could sort of fall in a heap and go, okay, well, what, where's my business at now? Or I could pivot. And I always come from a place of there's no failures, there's only lessons. And in that moment, I decided that I was going to just go for it in a new capacity again. I had already pivoted so many times as things came up, what was one more time? So that's where the coaching really started to evolve because I thought, I have been mentoring and guiding people in the network marketing industry for so long. Why couldn't I take those same skills and actually put it into coaching people one-on-one -on -one that weren't just in my network marketing business? So that evolved. And now I have this incredibly successful business that I'm just so passionate about helping other people to thrive. And again, I can serve people all over the world by this beautiful thing called Zoom. And as things are starting to open up more, I'm able to travel again and I'm able to go and see people and run workshops and retreats in the flesh. That's perfect. That is a great evolution of you know, yeah. your journey from being a teacher. And I obviously I resonate with that because I have the heart of a teacher too. I've spent years in my earlier days teaching people how to play the drums, teaching people martial mm -hmm. arts. And I absolutely agree just seeing someone go from confused and not being able to do something to ah i've got it i can do it and just watch how their energy changes how they light up the smile on their face uh -huh. it truly truly lights me up as well so i definitely definitely agree with that so thank you for stepping up and being that person thank you absolutely mm. so you mentioned a topic that I have actually been called, and I believe in God, I believe in energy from the universe, I believe I am being called to step into a leadership role and mm -hmm. to create more leaders. That's why I revamped my messaging to help heart-centered entrepreneurs lead their business mm -hmm. and change the world. So you mentioned mm -hmm. leadership as something that other people recognized in you that you were doing with the network marketing and said, Beck is amazing at this. We need to tap into her and figure out what she's doing to create all of this abundance. So mm -hmm. what, what would you say are those, are those leadership traits or those qualities that allowed people to recognize and see that you were, that you were doing this amazing thing? Like, how did you, how did you do that? I believe that everybody is so unique and everyone has such incredible gifts and talents. And a lot of the time though, they don't know how to express those. They don't even know how to acknowledge what they are because I feel with society and the way that we're conditioned, you're just meant to fit in this little box and you're meant to go through life and and tick off all the things that society expects you to do. You know, go to school, get good grades, go to university, buy the house, buy the bigger house, retire. And it just doesn't sit well with me. And I really want people to hone into their strengths. And I think this came all the way back when I was teaching was it wasn't about the kids. And now for me, it's not about the actual coach. You know, there's so many programs out there that are, helping people to scale their business or, you know, fit into a strategy or into a mold to become multimillionaires. And so many people are failing because they're missing the core ingredient, which is them. So <laughs> I really, and honestly, like 
there are so many people that are following these strategies and they're getting so frustrated and giving up because there isn't one strategy for everyone. There's no one size fits all in this whole entrepreneurial realm that we're in. You have to come from your heart. You have to share what is inside of you. And I love to teach my clients to tap into their genius zone and then to lead as the CEO of their business and their life. And what I mean by that is I like to rise above and look, oversee what I'm doing with my businesses and my empire and make sure that I'm looking at it as the leader. And I try really hard and it can be hard to take the emotion out of it and look at it logically and as a business and see how it's running and saying, okay, you know, I need to have a support coach come in here because my time can be better spent doing this, or I need to hire a VA to do the emails because that's not, my time is best spent actually serving my clients. So, you know, in different areas of expertise, I have a beautiful energy and mindset coach who can go so deep and work with people with like past life regression and amazing things like that, that I'm just not skilled in. And I'm openly admit that I'm not good at everything. Nobody is. Okay. We all have our amazing gifts and strengths. And I think it's so important if you can tap into what they are and then build your business from that point, stay in your lane, stay in your genius zone. It's inevitable that you will be successful. It's when you're trying to put all the different hats on and do all the things and you're doing 10% here and 3% here and, you know, your, your coaching or whatever your genius zone is, you might only be spending 40 or 50% of your time there. And then you're trying to do all these other things, but it gets so blurred and so mucky and you're wondering why you're not getting results. So I personally like to spend 95% of my time in my genius zone. So I'm just spending all of that doing the things that light me up and then the other 5% is overseeing and making sure the rest of the business is running smoothly. And how did you determine what your zone of genius is? This is a, this is a topic that I've been also diving into um, mm -hmm. in my community and talking with people and just trying to figure out like what that is, like how you find it and then how you refine it and make it even stronger. So how did you find out what your zone of genius is and actually what is it? So again, it's a process and it has been a journey for me to really uncover. And I feel like I'm always still uncovering more. You know, there's so many layers of the onion. And as things evolve and progress in my business and in my life, you, you realize more and more what really lights you up. So when I speak to people, I ask them simple questions of, you know, what do you enjoy doing? Like, let's not think about a business right now. Like, what do you actually enjoy doing in life? And someone says, you know, I love writing. Okay, fantastic. Other people that are like, I love, I, I want to be on stage. You know, I love entertaining people. Other people that, you know, I love photography and looking at, at things differently like that. Not everyone is going to be the same. So coming back to your passions your strengths and your skill set. And again, you might not have a particular skill set in that. You might want to be a photographer, for example, and you have no idea how to use the camera. It doesn't mean you can't go and learn those skills. But if you have the passion for that, no one can ever take that away. So coming back to what really lights you up, and then we form a business around that. We look at business foundations, we look at the structure, we make sure we have an aligned strategy for you. Because again, there are a million strategies out there and you can have the shiny object syndrome of, oh, this is working for someone and this is working. But if you just hone in on what are my strengths, what do I like doing, then you can create a strategy and a plan from there and the rest will unfold. I see. Yep. Again, it, symmetry. It's very similar to, to what I teach people as well is you've got to be yourself. You, you have to give yourself permission to be powerful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And I find all too often people hide their true selves. And it's just so heartbreaking to see so many people that, again, try to fit into the box because that's what 99% of people do. Whereas when we think back over history of the people that who have done something different, they actually stand out and you remember them. And, you know, it could be someone like Queen is an example for the band. You know, they did things differently and they, they didn't follow the rules of, you know, having the three minute song that was on the radio. They went and produced, a, I think there's an 11 minute song. And they said, no one will listen to it. No, you know, it's not what we do. But next thing, Bohemian Rhapsody is one of the biggest songs in the world. So you don't have to do things the way everybody else is doing them. Your people will find you. There are people out there who would love to hear your message and love to like work with you and resonate with you. But if you are always trying to do the same as someone else, that's not going to be shining your light. And I have a lot of my clients that are like, oh, you know, you do it this way and I want to be able to do it this way. And I mean, I'm flattered and I love that they want to be able to use me as an example and as inspiration. But if they don't put their flair on it and their spin, then their audience won't resonate anyway because it's not coming from the heart. That's right. You've got to, you've got to put your own piece out there. Uh, you know, something that I tell people from this point forward, when they start working with me, anything that you want from anything that we cover, mindset, business, leadership, whatever it is, anything that resonates with you, like, oh, I want to do that. Take it. Mm -hmm. Anything that I say and teach that doesn't resonate with you, leave it. I'm under no... I'm under no ego trip that I'm the end all be all when it comes to coaches and creating a profitable business for somebody. I'm a piece of your puzzle. I am mm. not the entire picture. So, mm -hmm. and I think that's, I think that's a lot of what's being put out there or sold these days is, you know, what you were speaking to is that people are buying into a solution because it's making this entrepreneur or that entrepreneur, I say entrepreneur when really they're just marketers. But anyways, that's another whole conversation. Mm -hmm. But they they have this idea that they did it this way and they're making $5,000 a week or $20,000 mm -hmm. a month or whatever. And mm -hmm. I want that too. So if I want that, I've got to buy their program and I've got to do exactly what they did. Well, yeah. if you get into their program, and you find out that it involves sending a bunch of cold DMs and cold emails and being on sales calls on Zoom for the rest of your life. And that just literally drains the energy out of you and makes you sick to your stomach. Uh -huh. Well, what are you going to do with that $5,000 program you just bought? Nothing. And yeah. then how are you going to feel? It's, it's a huge problem. Huge yeah. problem. It really is. I, I feel the same and it really frustrates me. Um, I actually was speaking with someone the other day and they said they, in the last eight months, they'd spent over 50 Australian, 50,000 Australian dollars on coaching and they feel like they haven't got anywhere. And mm -hmm. they were just part of a mastermind and there was over 50 other people in the mastermind and it took eight weeks for them to even get a question answered because there were so many people in the Zoom raising their hand. It took eight weeks to get to that person to answer their question. And they said, you know, how do you do things differently? And I, I actually, I was just gobsmacked. And I said, I just don't understand. Like, I, I don't know how people can sleep at night taking money off people and not serving them. I just can't understand and fathom that. And with my programs, I know you're so similar. If someone wants to work with me and commits to working with me, I'm all in for them. I'm there every step of the way. I want to see them succeed. So I will do everything in my power to help them succeed. And if they go down a path and they're, they're exploring a particular strategy and then they say, this just doesn't feel right for me, 
Okay, fantastic. Let's go back to the drawing board. Let's find something that works for you because don't come into my program and think that on week one, we will learn topic one. On week two, we will learn topic two. It doesn't work like that. You know, we will go through the evolution of working out where they are, tapping into their genius zone. I have this beautiful ability. This is definitely one of my strengths is this beautiful ability to pull out people's passions and ask questions that can go so deep that they can just uncover this whole level of themselves that they didn't even know was there. And then from that, we can craft this beautiful business and put all of the different, the foundations, the strategy, the teams, the leadership, all of that is beautiful bundle. So they have a business that not only lights them up, but is actually going to be profitable and sustainable and bring in consistent money. Because we all go into business to make money. And I also see this all too often is people say they're in business, but they're not making any money. And it's okay to make money. And you want to be making money because as I said at the start, the more that I believe, the more I earn, the more I can do. So it, it just baffles me that people are preying on people like that and, and over promising and under delivering. And it's just, it really frustrates me because it, unfortunately, then you and I are tainted with the same brush of, oh, you're just a coach. You know, you're the same. And how is your program different? And how, and what you're going to do is different to what I've experienced because they've been beaten and bashed and had their money taken and not got anywhere. So I think the most important thing for us and for others that are trying to step into the same space is to lead with authenticity in everything that you do. No matter what you do, lead with authenticity, be genuine and want to serve. If you don't want to serve and help people succeed, then you're not going to succeed because people will eventually see through that and then just feel disheartened and, you know, it's, yeah, it can just be a vicious cycle. So I always lead from the heart. I always lead from wanting people to thrive and I will do whatever I can in my power and my ability as a coach to be those couple of steps ahead of someone. As you said before, you don't claim to be an expert. None of us are experts. We've just gone through the journey ourselves and now we want to help others to do the same. Yep, that's right. That's right. That's what it's all about is leading from that place of wanting to serve. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, if somebody is not in it for the act of being of service, if they're in it for the money, if they're in it for the flash, if they're in it just for the, the gold rush, which is what I believe we're experiencing now in the coaching industry, it's a gold rush. And just like back in California, when you had the boom there, you had a bunch of shops selling people picks and shovels. Here, take this pick, take this shovel, and go get you some gold. Oh, did you want a place to put that gold? Well, here's here here's a bucket. You know, come back and buy the bucket. And, mm. You know, I got this buddy over here who owns a bank. You know, you can deposit your gold. Over. It's just, it's such a mess right now because it's new. But mm. being part of that is actually really exciting to me. Yeah. Because yeah. we get to see the evolution of it. We get to live the evolution of it and mm -hmm. be here for people coming from a place of authenticity and of service. And those other people who have, you know, unfortunately made those clients feel jaded, made them feel mm -hmm. abandoned, mm -hmm. those people are not going to be around for very much longer because they are starting to be found out. And mm -hmm. so... Yeah, I totally agree. You, mm -hmm. me, any other coach, the best thing you can do is show up with authenticity and out of a place of service and your people will find you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it, when you find your people, it just feels so good and it's easy 
you know, it's like this conversation, it just flows. You're not always trying to think of the next thing or how you can do things differently. It's just, you have the best interest of them at heart at all times. So you just find out where they're at and you help them to get to the next spot. That's honestly what you're doing. And that is your job as a coach, I believe, is to be there to guide and support. And of course, you can have templates and you can have all the things and all the extra bells and whistles, but really just come back and hone in on the basics because for me, coaching is being there, leaning into that person heart to heart and working out where they're at right now and where they want to go and help them figure out that path to get there. Agreed. It's all about the gap. Mm -hmm. And so speaking of, say you've got a client that comes to you and says, Beck, I'm just getting into coaching. I'm just getting into life coaching and I'm not really sure where to start about how to tap into my potential and relay that out and start building community. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you would tell that person to do or help them try to understand? The very, very first thing is to go inward and work out where their passions lie make a list of the things that light them up and make them happy in this world and then write a list of their skills and the things that they they currently already do know and the qualifications that they have um, and in saying that you don't need to have a long list of qualifications to be able to do anything in this world you if you come from the heart then you can always learn new skills so they would be my first two things. And then also a list of your weaknesses. And I've heard people say before, you know, we don't focus on our weaknesses. Well, no, we, we don't have to focus on them, but we have to acknowledge them. We need to know what we're good at and what we're not good at. Because if you don't acknowledge that, you will easily slip into the pattern of doing all the things. And some of them will be in you know, in your weakness list or something you don't enjoy doing. And that's where you can get really bogged down and feel really flat really quickly because you're spending your time and more importantly, your energy on things that just aren't in your genius zone. So being aware of what they are and then working out, okay, you may need to delegate. And at the start, if you're brand new, you're thinking, I, I can't hire a VA and I can't, you know, money's tight and things like that. That's reality when you're starting a business most of the time. That's okay, but it's learning to create your plan and structure to spend the majority of your time doing the things that you are good at and that are your strengths. And then the other things can fall into place, but don't make them the priority. That's what I find a lot of people do is they... They also want to make sure that everything's perfect and that they have the website set up and it's, you know, they've spent $10,000 on a website and they want to make sure that they've got funnels set up and they, they don't want to start till they have an email list of a thousand people. And, you know, there's all these things that are just barriers that just get started. I always like to say that done is better than perfect. And if I'm putting out work, I'm happy for it to be a B plus. You know, it doesn't have to be an A because nothing is perfect. And I can go back to things now and, you know, um, speaking events that I've done in front of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people at different times that are not perfect. And I go back now and look at it and go, oh, my goodness, I would have changed this and this and this and this. But it was so powerful at the time that it doesn't, didn't have to be perfect because again, I've always led from the heart. So I think we can let our brains take over sometimes and procrastinate and think that everything has to be top notch. Whereas my biggest advice is just get started. Look at your strengths, look at your weaknesses, look at what you want to achieve and then, as you said before, let's look at bridging the gap. What can you start to do to get you 
one step closer every single day to achieving your goal. Break it down into bite-sized pieces because you're not going to be a millionaire overnight. You're not going to have 20 clients in the first week. But you, if you take the action steps that are aligned to your strengths every single day and you show up in authenticity and you show up to serve and taking that pressure off of when you speak to someone, I can you can just feel people's energy when they go into a conversation and they expect something from that conversation. They expect that it's going to turn into a lead or turn into a client or whatever. Whereas I just go into everything with, I have no expectations of what this is going to be. What will be, will be. I know that higher powers have their plan in place for me of what I'm meant to be doing. And if that's meant to be part of my journey and I'm meant to work with that client or I'm meant to go on that stage or I'm meant to meet amazing people like yourself, that's what will happen. But if I put that pressure on myself and for example, if we went into that summit and I went, okay, I'm going to have 15 new contacts and four of those are going to become clients and I'm going to get on seven new podcasts. It takes all of the joy out of what you're doing. Just go in and love what you're doing because if you love what you're doing, people will resonate. And that's what happened with us. We just started connecting and talking and getting to know each other. And we're like, wow, we're both so in sync with so many different things that this has just flowed so beautifully. Neither of us have tried. We haven't put more effort in and I haven't been sitting here trying to strategically plan how I could get on this podcast. It just naturally happened. Right. You, you just, you made so many excellent points right there. So, you know, guys, if you need to figure out where to start and <laughs> need to just a plan to start diving into your expertise, your zone of genius, to start figuring out what you like, what you don't, what you might be wanted to, to delegate later on, rewind this, mm. rewind <laughs> this or watch it again. Watch the whole thing again, because Beck just gave you a lot of value right there. And uh, something else that you mentioned about the website, it, it triggered a, a story for me in, in the, the vein of perfection. So, and you're right. So many people think that they have to have everything in place before they start. It's got to be perfect. Got to have the website, got to have the email list, got to have this. The list goes on and on. I interviewed someone on this podcast and I don't think this made it onto the show, but it might have been during the pre-interview. Anyways, he was talking to a colleague and his colleague got hired on as a, I believe it was a marketing agency. He had his own marketing agency and he got hired by this client and it was completely you know, by surprise because all they had ever done was sent a few messages back and forth through Messenger or something like that. And when they came to the onboarding, the guy asked him if he had ever checked out his website, his SEO, anything. And the client was like, no, we were just chatting back and forth on Facebook. And I was like, you're the guy. Mm -hmm. And so he, he, he didn't even need a website. He, and, and truth be told, his website was, is, was junk at the time. Like it was just yeah. a mess. It wasn't even done. And he was mm -hmm. like, God, I hope he doesn't check it out. I got to hope he doesn't check it out. <laughs> and he didn't, and he didn't need it. This guy's a $10,000 a month client. Didn't mm. go, didn't go to the website at all. Didn't care. It was connection, mm -hmm. connection people. It's all about mm -hmm. connection. So I just wanted to, to tell that story and just resonate with what you had said because it's absolutely true. It's so true. I come back to two core principles that I stand by and that is creating a good authentic connection with someone and then having open communication. And if something's not working, talk about it. Like why isn't it working? Why are you feeling frustrated at the moment? Is it something that I can help you with? Or is this 
where we need to dive deeper into the mindset and energetic work and actually find out what is causing these triggers for you. And that's the beautiful part of what I do in my business is that I have the ability to help people with the business, the strategy, the leadership, but also facilitate really powerful mindset and energetic shifts because everybody comes up with limiting beliefs and everybody comes up with roadblocks. And if you know how to work through those and actually get to the crux of why you're feeling that way and why you're having these doubts, then we can smash through those and then get to that next level. Because all too often people come in and say, you know, I, I need the perfect strategy. I just need, I need that. And they hang on to that thinking that that's the one thing that's going to you know, skyrocket them to $30,000 months. And nine times out of 10, it's got nothing to do with the strategy. It's actually to do with your mindset. And the money story, for example, that you have had from when you were a child that you don't even realize that you have. And it's a, being able to rewire your brain, rewrite your money story, smash through those limiting beliefs of I'm not worthy, I'm not deserving of this, and just realize that every single person on this planet is allowed to have this incredible abundance. You know, we are all deserving of that. And I believe that abundance is our birthright. Like we've stepped onto this earth and why can't we have everything that we choose? And for people to feel like and have had that conditioning that you need to follow one particular plan to reach whatever it is that you're wanting to achieve is just rubbish to me. It's there's so many pieces of the puzzle that have to come together and then all of a sudden it clicks. And as I said, most of the time it's the mindset things. So I'm really passionate about combining that in with all the other things that I do. And yes, it's important to have a clear strategy because putting things into place and having a dream without an actual plan is just exactly that. It's just a dream. You have to take aligned action to achieve your desires, but you also have to do the work up here and in here to be able to achieve what you want. That's right. Now you had mentioned something about um, wanting to have the, the perfect strategy or the perfect solution to whatever problem it is that they're trying to solve, you know, getting more clients, building their business, probably being the main stuff that, you know, people want when mm. it comes to entrepreneurship, right? And <clears throat> they come to you with this idea of, I want this perfect strategy. I'm mm -hmm. curious to get your thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. I believe that if someone is coming to you with that kind of energy, that kind of language, it's because they actually don't believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? 100% agree with you. If you, as I mentioned before, if you believe that one particular strategy is going to create this big, you know, tsunami, and then all of a sudden you're a multimillionaire, it doesn't work like that. It's where I always say, come back to basics, come back to you, because without you, you don't have a business, right? And if you aren't running this business and growing this business from what feels good for you, it doesn't matter. You could have a line of all these different strategies. Someone could give you a million dollars and say, here you go, go and create something. And you could still not be successful because we look at examples of that happening of people that win the lotto, for example, and then, you know, six months later, they've blown it all because there's so much stuff going on internally that they don't understand how to receive. They don't know how to process that kind of money. They don't know what to do. They're you know, they have all their money stories that are coming through of, I need the fast car and I need the mansion and all the things. And it's coming back to because they don't actually have that self-love for themselves. And there's all this stuff coming up if they actually started to dig down 
and people think, oh, you know, I've, I've won a million dollars, I'm set for life. But if you don't know how to do things with that and create more with that and work on yourself through the process, you will end up back at square one. I promise you that. So I think it's so important to just come back to you and be you. Like I say all the time, be unapologetically you, no matter what that looks like. And that could be you expressing yourself with pink hair. It could be you talking about your faith and how that lights you up because some people hide that as well. It could be the fact that you do receive guidance from guides or God or whatever that is. Share that because your people will find you. It might be that, you know, some people resonate with throwing out F-bombs here and there and things, and that's their way of expressing themselves. Their people will find them. You have to be you and be uniquely you because there's no one else like you. And I honestly believe that that is everybody's superpower, is that you are you and no one can take that away. And if you just learn to let go of the conditioning of I can't express myself, I can't be me and fitting into the little box, that's when everything just starts to flow because you're not trying. You know, for so long, I have done it myself where back in the day I was trying to, when I first started growing my network marketing business, it was, this is the structure. This is how you have to do it. You need to call this many people a day. You need to send out an email to this, these people and this is the template, change their name and that's what you send. And it just felt so icky to me. And so many times I said to my husband, like, I can't do this. This does not feel right. And he's very wise, my husband, and very, he's a man of very little words. But when he says things, you, you know, your ears prick up because he's always on the money. And he, I remember him saying to me one day, he's like, well, why are you doing it like that then? If it doesn't feel good, why are you doing it like that? And he said, you don't follow the rules. He said, you do things differently and then it feels good. He said, so how can you make this feel good? I was like, mm, okay. Good question. I Very good just question. Look at things through eyes of curiosity. How could I do this differently? And then all the ideas will start to flow. And it's like, oh, okay, I don't have to send out, you know, blanket email to everyone. I can do that differently. What feels good for me? Why am I selling this product? Why am I selling myself? Like, what is the transformation that I can help people with? Whether that was in network marketing with the amazing products that I was sharing, whether that's myself now selling myself as a coach, come back to how can you help people? Why would people give you money? Why would they give me money over someone else? Like, what's the transformation that I can help them achieve? And I find still to this day, too many people focus on the pain. And there was that whole marketing campaign going on for a while there where it's like, make them feel like rubbish. Make them like, pull them down, tear them down and make them feel awful about themselves and then you slip in and be like, oh, I can help you. I'll save you. Give me all this money. I mean, it just, it, it doesn't feel good for me either. That just feels no. so yucky. So yes, people can be where they are right now and they can not be happy with where they are and they can have goals of where they want to go. Focus on where they want to go and help be that guide for them to get there. Focus on the transformation, but do it in a way that aligns with you and aligns with them. Because otherwise, that's where things can get really murky because you're trying to be something that you're not and you're trying to do something that doesn't feel good in every single fibre of your being. When I teach and I support and I do everything with my clients all the way from doing the sales call through to supporting my clients and helping them grow, 
I do that with so much zest. And I mean, I hope you can feel that. Like I have so much energy to give and I just love what I do. So if you don't love what you do, have a really big, deep think about why. Like why are you doing what you're doing then? Life is too short to do things that we don't enjoy. So if you are in a particular field or you're in a nine to five and you, you, you're like, I really want to have my own business, then have a really hard think about where you're at and how you could do things differently to start taking the little steps to get to where you want to go. Speech. Sorry, I went, I went off on a little bit of a tangent <laughs> there, but I just get so like this, it fires me up because I'm like, there are so many people hiding their gifts in the world right now. So many people have so much to give but they're not either giving themselves permission to be themselves and share what they're thinking. Like I had a client who was like, I've had all these ideas for 10 years and in the shower every day, I would be putting out all these things of I should do this. I should do that. And she said, and they stayed in that shower cubicle. I never did anything with them. And she said, now I've just gone bugger it. Like it's time. And I'm ready to show people what I can do. And now she's so successful. And it's like, you've wasted 10 years because you were worried about what other people think and you were comparing. She said, oh, you know, but I was worried that I wouldn't be able to match this person and I wouldn't do it like this person. I said, that's great. You don't wanna be like anyone else. So I feel like there's so many people that are just hiding their incredible gifts and talents because they're either scared to fail. And to that, I say there are no failures in life. There are only lessons. I have had what some people would say failures, but I always learn to look at it through those eyes of curiosity and look, how could I do this better? How could I change this for next time? Do I need to pivot? Do I need to evolve to this? Do I need to scrap that and start again? <laughs> And that's okay. Like we can have those moments in our business because that is part of being an entrepreneur. And I think that's the flexibility and that's the excitement that you mentioned before is that we get to go through these processes and we get to be here throughout the whole journey and see what's coming at each different stage. It's just, it is so exciting and yeah, I just, I just want more people to take the leap of faith. Just do it. Just jump. Just see what happens because it can be so exciting and so empowering to put your message out to the world. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be scary. Like the mm -hmm. first time you, the first time you try it and it's going to be scary. Probably the second or third, or fourth, maybe even the fifth. You know, this is something that I talk about quite a lot is like, you have to have courage. Like yeah. being an entrepreneur is about bravely going forward. Mm -hmm. And being brave does not mean you don't feel fear. It mm -hmm. means you feel the fear and you do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And just like that lady you were talking about in the shower and all those shoulds, they stayed mm -hmm. in that, that little shower box it's, you know, I, I, I wonder about that. And I, I think maybe that's actually what she needed. Mm. Like mm. that was part of the universe's plan for her. Mm -hmm. She needed to marinate for lack of a better word in that mm -hmm. shower, in those feelings of not putting herself out there. She needed to mm -hmm. sit in that fire for so long. And now Mm -hmm. It's that fire that propelled her forward at the rate that she is now so successful. So I, I wouldn't say that it was time wasted. No, no. And I, yeah. Motivation and fire built. Yes. And that was something that we uncovered in the, the depths of the mindset energetic work was her coming full circle with that and looking at it differently and going, you know what? 
I wouldn't be where I am now today if I hadn't had that time to process and to think and to, she was working through so much personal stuff at that time. And as I said to her, you probably wouldn't have even had the capacity to create and, and do the things, take the action. You had the thoughts, but you might not have physically been able to take the action at that time. Whereas it was this slow burning buildup to where it was, where all of a sudden she went, I'm doing this. And then it all came together so beautifully. So for people that are feeling, oh, you know, I, I should have done this. I should have, should have just, just start with where you are at now and just make a decision and go with what feels right for you in this moment. And as you said, that might be more time to marinate and to process and to work through what is ever happening in your life at the same time, you will be guided on when the right time is to do things if you are open to listening and to receiving that guidance. So being a, like the universe is incredibly powerful and there's so many signs if you actually start to ask. Um, and that's something that I teach my clients that I think could be really valuable for people is if you don't, if you honestly be listening to this podcast and you're like, I do not know where to start. What I would recommend is get a notebook, get a pen, go and sit out in nature, calm yourself, do some beautiful deep breathing, and then just ask. It's okay. You might not be spiritual. You might not be tapped into the higher powers that be, but just ask and see what comes out. I think you'll be really, really surprised. Um, one lesson that I found so incredibly valuable for me and for someone who like teaching people that don't know how to start on the journaling journey is if you're sitting out there and you you just don't know what to write you don't know where to start you have a thousand thoughts I look at a, something in nature so for example it could be a tree and I sort of you have a and this may seem silly but trust me it works you can have a conversation with that tree for example and you can gain lessons from that. So you could be sitting there looking at the tree. Go, okay, tree, what can you teach me today? And you think about the things a tree could teach you. They stand strong. They put their roots deep into the ground. You know, they, they move with the wind, but they stay steady. There are so many you could do different with a flower. You could look at a bird. And so it could just be a really beautiful segue into you opening up and allowing yourself to feel more because we can all, we can learn lessons in every single aspect of our life if we choose to. So from that, you can then sit there and start to write down your plans and ask yourself, like ask you, what feels good to me? What do I want to be doing with my life? Where would I love to see myself in one year? Where would I love to see myself in 10 years? And put everything. It might be, I would love to be able to buy a house. I would love to have a partner and to get married and have children. I would love to be able to have traveled to 10 countries. It doesn't just have to be about business. Right. Because something else I think is so important is that we can lose ourselves in our business. And... I really believe that we are not our business. We run our business. We have to share ourselves in our business. But like I am Beck McCarthy. I am completely separate to my businesses. I have many different things that I do and I oversee that. It doesn't mean that I don't have emotion in those and that I don't run them and lead them as me, but I've learned to remove myself and also just be back and be a wife and be a mum and not always be in that business and have that business hat on. So I, yeah, that would be one of my biggest bits of advice is just to come back to you and writing things down because you'll be so surprised what comes out if you just allow yourself to write. I think the overarching theme of this podcast is it all comes back to you. Uh -huh. Everything, your life, your business, your happiness, 
actually, it's so crazy that we're talking about this right now because I literally made a post on this just today about <laughs> like, doesn't matter what you want, you know, success, wealth, love, doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't come from external sources. It comes mm-hmm. from you. Mm-hmm. And once you have that ability to love yourself, to view yourself as successful, to view yourself as wealthy, things will start shifting. But it mm-hmm. doesn't happen because you bought somebody's program that's claiming they'll make you $10,000 a month in 90 days. It happens in here. That's right. Absolutely. So this Absolutely. has been this has been just a, a great <laughs> conversation, Beck, as I knew it would be. We both knew it would be. And yep. you, you expressed so many beautiful sentiments, places to start, values and tips for people who are struggling maybe to see themselves as an expert to get rid of imposter syndrome. So much gold was shared here today, folks. So again, rewind this podcast, mm-hmm. share it out with other people who need to hear this message, who need to hear Beck speak these incredible words and, and put this energy out. So speaking of um, hearing more from you, connecting with you, where are some great places to connect with Beck McCarthy and get more into your work? Yeah, well, thank you so much for just allowing me to be so free and open and just share from here. As I said to you, I don't make notes. I just feel into the question and just go. And sometimes I, you know, I can talk underwater. So thanks for everyone that's come this far with me. (laughs) But I really hope that there was some little, you know, pearls of wisdom in there and things that I've learned on over a decade of being an entrepreneur. And I just want other people to be able to do what they love and also make good money at the same time because it is 100% possible just come back to basics and if you don't know where to start then have a guide that is those couple of steps in front of you that can help you to put the pieces together and I love what I do I mean I really hope that that's come through today that I'm so passionate about what I do and helping others it definitely has I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. Um, I, ha- I do have a website that is um, Road to CEO, so R-O-A-D, the number two, CEO.com. Lots of amazing information on there about more about what I do. Um, you can obviously then link to my socials through there and see what I'm doing on Instagram, on Facebook, Um, and different packages that I have available. And I just work with people where they're at. So I offer really bespoke packages and programs that aren't your cookie cutters. And it's not, you know, we'll go through this program and, you you know, we're going to learn about finding a niche in week one. And it's not about that with me. It's, um, and they, they do have their place, but this is definitely a journey that you will go on with me to really rediscover and reclaim your identity and then be able to put a really solid plan in place to be able to reach the goals that you want to achieve. So I would love to hear from anybody if this resonates. This isn't going to, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Neither are you, Brian. Like we, we, we have our people and that's okay. I'm like, that's what I mean. I have no attachment to that. And I want to work with people who want to work with me. So absolutely, um, yeah, it's a a beautiful space. And I'm just really excited to help more people to shine their light and be the best version of themselves. Because I just think that that's life's too short to be anything but. Amen to that. All right, guys, you heard it here. Road to the number two CEO.com is the best place to connect with Beck and get more into her work, into her insights, see what she has available to lift you out of a space of stuckness, apathy, imposter syndrome, and build a business that's freaking fun and will make you money because that is what it's all about. 
So again, Beck, thank you so much for being here today. It was an absolute pleasure and I look forward to seeing where you go. Thank you so much. I'm so appreciative. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks so much guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. Please give it a comment. Let me know what your biggest takeaway was from this amazing entrepreneur's interview. And if you wanna see more videos just like the one you watched, click right up here because they're exactly what you need to see next. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.